we probably would not have bought a ticket. For whom among us moms would choose sadness, suffering and grief over joy and peace? Not I, I must admit reluctantly. Life is a way of hiding the future from us. A way to help us to not see it like an angel would come in and blind our eyes. Sometimes the trials of life are so hard that we don't let the sun shine in. But I've learned when the rain falls in tears of unending sadness to bring an umbrella. That is the way it was the birth of our miracle baby, Zachary Luke John. Zachary came into our life as a complete surprise. He was our eighth child and our eighth blessing. I was still excited. I was gonna be a mom again. I was overjoyed. I think I told my friends twice. I never stop the joy that goes before you when you have that baby living inside you. An excitement that only the moms in the room can understand. Um, I think I never stopped smiling and Zachary was implanted in my womb and I should have known being my eighth baby because I started with the nausea, the moods, and also feeling like fainting. And I thought, well, did I think to take a test? No, not really. I had been pregnant so many times that I just was so busy that I didn't even think about it. So the baby was inside me and we were one, Zachary and I, two persons in one body. And Zachary came with himself, unexpected to me, a glorious grief that would live in my heart forever. I did not know he was gonna not make it. I didn't know that he was live so short. And I treasure the moment anyways, but we women do, as we have a pregnancy, we treasure always. But I didn't know he'd be so short. This beautiful flower of a child was but a rosebud. But it was presented to me with the rose had some thorns on it. And maybe you all have a rosebud in your heart that maybe you saw or maybe you didn't see. Maybe you carried and thought would be set up the nursery like I did and thought, this is the baby that is going to fulfill my dreams, the one I was waiting for so long. And then it was too short of a journey for him. But ladies, love is like that. When we receive a love so strong, a mother's love, we are ready to accept it with all the trials that it comes with. We open our heart to love and we're presented with that flower, that beauty and joy and the pain and suffering along the way. And many voices would shout it out to us, don't accept the rose, don't take the rose. It has thorns, do you see the thorns? But we do as moms, we accept the rose, thorns and all. And this is better guys, thank you. Um, however, in this, in this um, flower, there's a hidden treasure. And the flower is the aroma of something that no man can understand. We accept the rose, thorns and all, pain and suffering, and tears and grief. This too soon goodbye of a gift, on loan by my Heavenly Father, my baby boy, remembered as a blessing in disguise. I'm sure you all feel the same. It's something that you just never know what is going to happen in your heart. Miracle babies seem to waltz into our life, full of surprises. They're like that last dance that you think you're never ever going to be able to be asked to, to dance and someone taps you on the shoulder and you say, I'll do this dance. And you feel like you're, you're spinning around and your feet don't even touch the ground. You feel like you've been dancing all night. You glide and you are enjoying the entire song. Unlike a good surprise though, like take this dance or the last, you're pregnant, the, um, the, the bad surprise when they say, your baby's not going to make it. We need to take the ICU. I don't think it's going to live very long. It's, it's a nightmare that plays over in your mind over and over again. It's like, is this really happening to me? Please help me, Lord. Um, I'll never forget the day Zachary came into my life. He um, he was at my eighth blessing, so you know that I had fast labors. By the time it's your eighth, even if you're first, sometimes it is. So I get to the hospital, and Zachary was 10 centimeters complete, and I mean, I was ready to deliver my baby. And the sweet nurse said, your doctor's not here, can I deliver the baby? And of course at that point, unbearable pain, y'all know, you said yes please. So the baby was born, two pounds, two ounces, full term. So there I had the baby and I just thought he was premature like my Sean who was a beautiful, you know, little baby but premature. So I just wasn't worried at all. Thank God I'm not medical. I know if you're not medical, you, that helps you a little bit. So I, I just said, oh sure. And she started yelling in a loud cheerleader voice. Small baby, call the ER. I was panicked. I'm like, it can't be good. My husband, who's a physician, was not near me at all. I mean, I'm there by myself on the table, you know, just having a baby. And I go, where is Patrick? Well, he was there with Zachary and the nurse and the ER and everyone trying to save his life. And I, I just sat there in like perfect shock. I should have known that um, 
you know, something was wrong. Because Pat didn't come over and give me the big congratulation, high five as a boy. You know, mom gets had, we had a lot of babies. And so four boys and four girls, the tiebreaker. But no, it wasn't like that at all. He just was in shock himself. You know, the men suffer as well. I don't know if you all know that. The men suffer as well. So I think a mother's heart is made for moments like this that, um, that try to capture those moments because you don't know how long. So my prayer partner came in, Judy, a friend of mine from Augusta at the time, was my prayer partner, Judy Harvey. And she came in and she said to me, Ellen, we gotta go see the baby. Well, I had just delivered. I didn't feel like putting my clothes on, walking down the hall and seeing the baby, but I did it. And I saw little Zachary there in the incubator and he lay there so little, so small, but looking so much like the other mongas. And I said to him, Zachary, in almost a whisper, all I could muster up. And Zachary turned his hair like this and he said, in my own mind only, Mama, I love you. And if I had not got up off the tail, I would never see him. But maybe some of you all have not gotten up to see the baby because you didn't see the baby because it was a miscarriage. You had the baby only in your heart. And the baby came out and delivered, and you didn't get to hold him and see him and take pictures. So for these people as well, the glorious grief is still there. We so know that, that God will heal only that grief that was given. So, so once in a lifetime, my baby Zachary came, and in my mind forever, I remember that. But maybe you only remember the I'm pregnant and the journey along the way of hopes and dreams, and then saying, Lord, why? And there is a lot of, um, there are a lot, there's like, like the dad came to give you hope. Hope in the Lord that weeping comes in the morning, but weeping comes at night, but joy is in the morning. We have the joy all the time to know that God has a plan, and he doesn't do things for naught. And this world has many sufferings, but he delivers us from them all. Zachary's life came to an end, and the doctor brought us a baby. He was still alive in a room filled with like 20 to 30 people, and everyone wanted to hold baby Zachary while he's alive. So I had the mom, I was telling late on the walk, I was freaked out a little. I had never seen a baby die. I only had held my baby when they were alive, so I passed it right away to Patrick, who passed it around the room. And all of our seven children came, one by one. But one man, Stuart, a neighbor, was in the room. I don't know how he got there. I don't know how he found out. But he took a chance to hold little baby Zachary. He sat there and he held him longer than most people. It was later to find out that, that Stuart had had a baby, his firstborn, had, his wife had miscarried her, and he never got to see the baby or hold his firstborn. So Stuart sat there and in a way, Zachary healed a portion of his heart through God's love by holding our baby. So I say like this, Zachary had a mission. See, he fulfilled his mission. And even though he was small and um, two pounds and he lived a short time, 500 people came to his funeral to say, we believe in life. And I quote with Dr. Seuss, and y'all do too. A purse is a person, no matter how small, small. No matter if it's two weeks inside you, two years, two months, it's a baby. It's small, but it has a purpose. It changes you forever. So gathered together in that room were people that, that were with us through the journey, people that knew. And so I say with delight and with sorrow in my eyes that those who know the greatest sorrow have been given the greatest joy. It's essential. It's essential, Lord. The Lord says today that you accept the gift of glorious grief. Those who have kind of tried to run away from it, tried to like hide it behind a smile that says, I'm fine. I know how many times I said that. I, I cry if people said like this, how are you doing? I go, why'd they say that? Of course I'm not doing fine. So I got so, so I got used to how are you doing? And I wasn't fine. So I gathered around women who had done the journey. Those who had had arms to hold me. Those who had, who had words to encourage me those who had time to spend with me as I journeyed along. I tried to hide my grief. I tried to weep the tears because I was told that tears are a prayer that you cannot speak out loud. And how many times can we not talk out loud? We want to say it. We try to say it, but the words don't come because we're so saddened by the journey itself. So please know that I say tears are the rain that heals the soul. Tears are what makes it better. And to the men here who hold the women whose hearts are broken from the hope they had and then forsaken because of the journey so short, hold them, even if you say not a word, and say it's all right. And let them know that. You love them, and you love the baby as well. It's a journey you have to take together. Really, it's a journey you take. No one knows it but you and, and the spouse, really. And I'm not on my paper or on my talk, but I do want to say this. I never want to be the woman after the journey of glorious grief that goes in a pew, and I'm trying so hard to be with God myself that I miss there's a girl or a boy in the pew that's crying tears because they're sad. So on this journey that y'all have taken and y'all know the pain that we go through when we suffer a loss or a disappointment that we didn't hope for, 
to stop a moment. And so on this journey, learn that stop, enjoy the moment. Stop, see the other person. Take time, treasure each memory. Treasure the children that God gives you that are alive, but also treasure what has happened. Don't, don't erase it. When the baby's birthday comes out, it's been 17 years since Zachary died. That's a long time. But the Mongan celebrate rig. All my kids call me, they go, Mom, they're all adults. Today's Zachary's birthday. So for me, I'm sorry. For me, it's been a long time. For y'all, oh, maybe a week, maybe a month, maybe a year. Don't, don't hide the grief. Let it shine forth. That's what heals you. And the journey that you took is going to help another, I promise you. My story's been told to many groups. It's been told in, in writing. This is the first time I spoke about Zachary in person. I don't know that I could have, I spoke when he died to our Christian community, but I don't know I could have done this at one year old, Zachary, you know, passed away. But we always had a birthday cake. I don't know, I'm getting the ideas. We had a birthday cake, we sang happy birthday to Zachary. Every year we still do what we can. The grandchildren know, they go, who is Zachary? But that's your uncle, you didn't have it. When my in-laws died, I thought, they're holding baby Zachary, they loved him. And so, don't hide the grief. Journal the grief. Remember the day. Hold the memories. Share it with another and help those who are grieving themselves. So few know how to do the journey. Look for those who do, who have the GPS, God's power working through his spirit. Look for those who know the journey. For the husbands, look for a mentor for them that they can pour their heart out. Sometimes men don't want to cry. See, I think crying is very, very hot to me because my husband, my husband was up. Not a believer when I when I found the Lord, and I am. And when He cries, I know that God's tendering Him. I find it very, very endearing. So remember, they too suffered the loss. And I'm going to finish on my talk because there's probably something important here. This is how I speak. I'm so sorry, y'all. Here, cherish the journey. Remember, it's very hard to forget. How many ladies would agree to that? It's hard to forget. We don't want to forget it. We want to remember it. And we pass it down the next generation. We have a memory box just like Jennifer. That's all when I heard about this ministry. I went, wow. That's what we did for Zachary, too. We bring it out on his birthday. We look at all the things that happened, the funeral, the pictures. And some of y'all don't have the pictures. But in your heart, God holds that picture of your son or your daughter. So please take a birth box. I'm going to end on that. So as we embark on this journey daily, again, be mindful of those that hold the glorious grief for their miracle baby. Way too soon they have to say goodbye. Maybe some have not even said goodbye. They're holding, like they're, they're like afraid to even say, my baby died. See, so we know that Christ himself, God the Father, holds that baby in the palm of his hand. And one day he'll wipe away every tear in our eyes. Because in this world we suffer, but in, in Christ we share the good news. And the good news is this. The hope is that when you walk a path of suffering, God has a plan for you to share and help another. It's in Corinthians 2, and I paraphrase. The suffering we have on this earth is to help another person, and I paraphrase. So here we go. The last of this talk is this. I hope it didn't take too long. I'm going to blame half of it on the whole <laughs> microphone. Here we go. Cherish the journey. I wrote this specifically for this, this ministry. I hope someone puts it to music. It'd be a beautiful song. Sweet, be a little louder. Thank you. Here we go. Be louder. The big finale, guys. In the Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I just pray these words will be taken to heart as we say, Cherish the journey, because this is not the end. Instead, it's a new beginning, my friend. For glorious grief doesn't appear in the heart, then disappear. No, it becomes a hidden treasure that becomes oh so dear. It remind us always of a life so small that others may not have forgotten had happened at all. But to the mother that carried this baby in her womb, who she loved and she cherished, remembered as left too soon. This glorious grief, grief sweeps over the mother's heart. So you see, he planted a garden and made an indelible mark. It began as a seed, then a bud, which grew and grew to be that miracle baby that changed you. Like a rose presented to us with many thorns, this glorious grief pricks our heart as we mourn. Cherish the journey. Do not be afraid to embark. Cherish the journey. Do not be afraid to embark, for in your life this baby plays a part. Always cherish the journey and enjoy the ride. Applaud the baby who lived inside. This miracle wonder will begin to unfold as forever in your heart this life you will hold. Hold it close. Let it continue to grow. Oh, what a story you'll have to tell. Your story may be used to heal another's heart 
and you will know that your baby had played a part. Cherish the journey. Please enjoy the ride. Never forget that baby that lived inside. Cherish the journey, I say again, but this definitely is not the end. It is a time for a new beginning, my friend. Thank you all so much for having me, and, and I just pray for you all, and I will hold you in my heart. Thank God you. God bless. Sweetie, also tell everybody that once they go to heaven, they'll see their children. Oh, yes. God holds the baby in the power of his hand. You'll see the baby again, and I just look forward to the journey to the heaven home. I have bookmarks for everybody. There's some door prize that Jennifer is going to give away. On the handout is the, the talk I was actually going to give if I had stayed on the